Hi, this is Roger Green, host of the Surfing the Mesh Tsunami podcast. This week, we are offering five conversations from episode 13, our preview of Global Fatty Liver Day 2023 from Global Liver Institute, with Jeff McIntyre, Mike Patel, Louise Campbell, and me, plus from The Vault, a look back at our wrap-up coverage of International Mesh Day 2023. This week's conversation comes from last year's International Mesh Day coverage. It includes Louise, Mike Patel, and me, plus Gina Biliotti madison from Mesh Knowledge and Mark Okarniak from the European Liver Patients Association, discussing what we each consider some of the high points from the 2023 event. The episode itself has a thorough description up front, so I'll just let my 2023 voice take over from here. Today, we're offering four conversations from episode 26, our discussion with patient advocates about their activities on International Nash Day. It evolved into a fascinating conversation about childhood and adolescent NAFLD and how to increase overall awareness among both frontline treaters and patients. I start this conversation by asking Louise Campbell to provide more information about the UK Parliament debate earlier that day. Louise notes that the debate was such a success that Vanessa Hepditch from British Liver Trust, who had planned to join us, could not do so because she was still doing press interviews hours and hours later. In the debate itself, Louise notes that MPs from all parts of the UK participated and that they were extremely well informed on childhood, NAFLD, and other issues. She notes that members told stories of their own weight loss and the government promised to brief MPs on liver disease on an interim basis going forward. One more point. One MP said he did not like the term living with obesity, which is considered patient-sensitive, because it implies that obesity is a permanent condition, which for many, maybe in most people. It need not be. This led to my closing question, in which I asked panelists what they envisioned that their organization's key 2024 International Nash Day activities might be. While their answers aligned with what they did for International Nash Day 2023, listen for some different twists and new directions. As International Nash Day grows and globalizes, the actions of organizations like these will comprise an increasing share of the day's activities, and also an increasing share of the volume, messaging, and energy behind the fatty liver public health debate throughout the year. Think about where all this is heading as you listen, and then just sit back, enjoy, listen, learn when you're done. Join the conversation in our LinkedIn discussion group. Louise, you've made the point that you said there were other things that came out of the British parliamentary debate you wanted to mention today. One of them, we got off on this path about kids in part because of something you mentioned from that debate. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us from that debate that you found particularly compelling or really a great thing to have coming from that level of government? Louise Campbell. I'm just going to sum up what the British Liver Trust did do today, apart from that, and I'll come back to that because I think it was quite loud. And and one of the reasons that Vanessa wasn't able to join us tonight is the amount of press interviews that she's giving, which I think is a statement to how people are engaging. When the press are interested and the level of engagement that they are getting, then we have momentum because it, we do need the press to be behind us. Yes, we do need celebrities to be front and centre, but a celebrity is more likely to come out of the press are already talking about it. And certainly people that I talk to are more aware about it. Uh, oh, I've heard about that or I've got a friend with that. So I think that that is absolutely vitally key. They've got lots of policy policies going. But what they did do for the Houses of Parliament debate, which was designed to go out today, and the MPs did a very good job. Now, they managed to get MPs to speak from England, Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland, which are part of the UK, not Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, which is obviously part of the EU. They looked at the arguments in different areas. Key things that came out for me was the level of knowledge that was there, and they were talking about the figures and they did use children, as I say, 39% of obese children in this country have NAFLD. But they did talk about green spaces. They talked about food insecurity. They talked about all the things that we commonly talk about that we think they're not aware of. That was reassuring to me that they were doing that. But they were putting, there was an option. We have a, a, a major conditions agenda at the moment with the health secretary. And liver disease is not part of it, but all of the other common ones are. Now, what we got secured from the Conservative Minister from the government was that they will come and talk to the parliamentarians who were there today and discuss liver disease at the interim review so that they will start to engage about talking about fatty liver and NAFLD. And what was very important was that all of these people had and shared their own stories about weight loss and how it was difficult. And actually, quite humorously, the government minister uh, representing the government was 19 and a half stone at one stage and had changed his behaviour and detailed how difficult it was to 
to keep it off. But what he was, what, what particularly struck me about him was he said he doesn't particularly like the term living with obesity because for some people you shouldn't need to live with obesity. We should be targeting change in health. And that's become a language that's obesity friendly and to prevent stigma like we live with people who live with um, hepatitis. It's been a language change. So that was an interesting comment for somebody who had obviously been in that situation. The key things that we also took home from that was the government has committed to remove all advertising by October 2025, which did raise a few eyebrows before the watershed of nine o'clock for children, but also minimum pricing potentially later on this year will come into force, but that may get pushed. But also they were talking about the wins we've had in the UK, not only with NICE yesterday, which was commented on, but also direct reference to International Nash Day. So that's what I mean. GLI have pushed that conversation with the British Liver Trust, with ELPA, with all of the advocacy groups now at the level of parliaments. But they were keen on talking about the wins that they'd had in trying to do... They support a mile in school, that every child should walk a mile in school to get steps up to do things like that. And some schools do it in the morning, but also healthier eating plans. But we introduced here, obviously, the traffic light system on foods for red, amber, green, something I use in fibre scanning as well. But people understand a traffic light system. But what they also have in here... Now, you can't go to a restaurant without seeing the calories on the food. So it tells you. And there was a slight discussion about what well, we should be also saying on that package that this is highly processed food. We're not, we've not necessarily gone that far, but they were focusing on the wins that they have got. And we've got momentum and they may well review, but they did commit to getting Fibroscan in 100 community diagnostic centres within two years, the 2.3 billion, to push that. And if they could do it quicker, they will engage to do that. Hello, we think we can do this quicker. But I think the bait was interesting. There was still a narrative that liver fat doesn't cause any harm if it's not causing fibrosis, which that's the last bit of the jigsaw puzzle. But they li- they linked it to productivity, health and workforce, extra days off sick, and how much that was costing the UK as a thing. And I think the figure that they came up with was obesity co- uh, costs the UK 58 billion a year, and Nathald and Nash within that. So they did address it from all of the angles that we talk about it. So I was very impressed with the information the British Liver Trust had given and at multiple points that they thanked the British Liver Trust for bringing these arguments but that liver health was a pandemic now and a major concern in the British health with one in five having naffled. So it was quite enlightening, shall I say, for a parliamentary debate. (laughs) Now we got it in the main house is the next one for that one. So the British Liver Trust have been very focused on that. Yeah, Got to start somewhere. As Marco was talking about making a start in a different place today. Good, good. So we're getting to the top of the hour, the bottom of the hour, kind of one hour in. So closing question. I wasn't sure what the closing question. Usually I know the closing question before we start today. I didn't. So my question is going to be, what initiatives do you see being a big part of International National Day 2024 based on where we are right now and what we think is likely to happen over the next 12 months? Mike Bottel. I think it goes back to what we started uh, today's conversation with, that primary care is a key success factor in all of this. And so if we can get to the point where we can get a big buy-in at that front line, it will make a huge difference because the physicians will be looking, proactively looking for patients who have these uh, comorbidity issues, uh, the metabolic issues, and patients themselves will be educated enough to go to the doctor and say, hey, I have like a 90% chance of having fatty liver. I need to be assessed for that. We're not there yet at all. So that's where I would like to be. I'll jump in. I'd like to see that we start to get some figures from the UK on how many diagnostic hubs have Fibroscan, how many fatty liver patients have been picked up, what it's done to stop the blockages getting to specialist care. And I think that will be part of the narrative that we can certainly drive in the UK uh, with the new announcements. We will start to see more and more pathways developed because we can do that with figures and statistics. And as we know, it's the evidence that's going to change globally the pattern. Okay, next. Gina Madison. I'm with Mike. I would love to see more focus within primary care and just the education there. That's been something that we've really felt has been important since day one. That was a key reason why my dad actually got a liver transplant because his primary care physician just did not have the education and the tools. Not to his fault. It just, you know, was the the state of the matter. Um, I also, I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole on this, but would love to see a treatment as well. Um, 
Um, so hopefully, you know, we ha see some progress in that space within over the next year also. Marco Korinyak. So I would say uh, it's a very difficult question. <laughs> I would really like to see us doing like what we are doing and scaling up. So sometimes we discuss should like, you know, 10 different patient representatives have one event with all five or should we have five events? And my answer is always like, let's try to have five events because people have very short memory and we need to remind them all the time that this is an issue, that we need to tackle this issue, we need to solve this issue. So I'm really hoping that we will scale up all the activities and like, and I don't know, make it double in, in the next 12 months just to be sure that the right people will hear this information and, and will make necessary changes. They say in the LGBTQ community in the States that every day is pride. And what I think I just heard you say is that every day is Nash Day, right? Yeah, you can say that. Okay, so let me land firmly with one foot in each camp. We talked about this yesterday. The British will now start to have the ability to produce data that can shape the rest of the world's understanding of the practicality of getting frontline involved more actively. I think as long as this is a philosophical debate, it goes nowhere. And I think, frankly, in the U.S. at least, efforts to, with this Supreme Court to force better packaging and awareness about food are going nowhere. Jeff McIntyre was on a month ago talking about how the um, FDA wants to put sugar levels. No, they want to limit how much sugar can be in a cereal for a cereal manufacturer to call that cereal healthy. And the manufacturers are fighting back saying that it's a free speech right. I should be able to call anything I want healthy. No, that's not a problem everywhere. It is here. But bringing frontline providers to the fight in more active ways will be pivotally important. And the two things that will help that happen, going down Gina's rabbit hole or getting a drug. But my reason at least of the abetacolic acid session was that based on what we know so far as meterome seems to align with what they say they're willing to accept. So at least in the States, we may get that one done fairly quick within the year, maybe. And then beyond that, taking the kind of data that's going to get produced in the UK and disseminated widely by British Liver Trust, by, by ELPA all over the rest of Europe, and by GLI and other advocates around the world to say getting frontline more actively involved in screening and testing, and not just through FIB4, will have tremendous benefits on social health and on economics. Hopefully when we reconvene next year and hopefully we get Get this group together at some point in June of next year just to take a one-year look back. Uh, we'll make progress on all that stuff. And now, back to Roger. We hope you've enjoyed this recording. If you have any questions or comments about the content of this conversation or the entire episode, please put them in the review section of the page from which you downloaded this conversation or send an email to questions at surfingmash.com. Next week, we'll celebrate Stephen Harrison with some of the key opinion leaders who knew him best. Until then, stay safe, surf on. We'll see you on the podcast. Bye-bye now.